just now, uh, 6 o'clock, it's time for our regular scheduled board meeting. Um, Commissioner Richardson is going to open us with the indication of pledge, if you'd stand. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to meet once again. We ask your blessings upon our meeting, Lord. Guide our decisions. Uh, may they be honoring to you. May they uh, represent our constituents well. Pray that you would just give us wisdom in all that we do and say. Pray that you would be with our first responders and our military. Lord, keep them safe. Bring them home tonight to their families. Or whenever they come back from deployment, Lord, keep them safe. We love you and praise you and thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for Our first item on the agenda is approval of minutes of June 18th and June 26th. Uh, the first one's a regular scheduled board meeting. The second one was a special call board meeting. Any changes or corrections? There are none. They'll have a motion to approve. Move to approve. Got a motion to approve by Commissioner Richardson. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Hill. Any discussion? Hear none. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right, moving on to consent consent agenda. We have two through nine. Any wishing to be pulled for discussion? Hear none. Do I have a motion to approve two through nine? Motion to approve. A motion to approve by Commissioner Fleming. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Stapleton. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Uh, we have a time specific. It's not time yet. So we'll move on to constitutional officers. Uh, consider a request to set the proposed not to exceed millage rate for 1920 fiscal year. Uh, Clerk of Court, Barry Baker. <coughs> So, all right, Mr. Chairman, it's, it's that time of the year in which that we have to set the, uh, it's a proposed not to exceed millage rate for, for the 1920 fiscal year. Uh, the current uh, year gross taxable uh, value, uh, it's the gross taxable value for the county is $1,970,785,000. Your current year rollback rate is 8.3, uh, 8.834 mills. The rollback rate is the rate that, that would generate the prior year tax revenues, and that is less allowances for new construction, additions, deletions, annexations, and improvements. Each mill generates uh, about, about $1,970,786 approximately. Last year at this time, you as a board set the proposed not to exceed millage rate at 9.000 mills. As a reminder, once you set the proposed millage rate here tonight, it's where that, that, uh, that you can lower it at any time in between now and, and the final budget hearing, but you cannot raise it. So, so what you set it tonight will be the, it's the top cap for your proposed not to exceed millage. Is there any questions? Any questions for Mr. Becker? No, sir. I, I did check, and it's where the uh, with the state, and it's where the state revenue estimates have not yet come in. All right. So it's where that that we we are still waiting on those, and it's where that those can be coming in. It's where that they usually trickle in over the next two to three weeks, probably. So. Right, sir. No, no questions. Thank you, sir. Okay. All right. Questions, comments, suggestions from the board on where you want to set the millage rate or the proposed millage rate? Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I'm just trying to recall what did we do last year. I think we 
We left it. Left it at, alone. At, right where it was at. Yeah. And I'm fine with that again this year. Yeah. I, I think we've done that in the past several years. Need a motion? Yes, sir. Mr. Kimmel, a motion that we let it remain where it's at? Nine mils. Nine mils. I got a motion to set the proposed rate at nine mils. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Commissioner Stapleton. Any further discussion? There are none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. All right. Right, moving on to item 12, staff reports. Ms. Betty Lawrence. Good evening, Mr. Chair, uh, commissioners and community. Uh, it's good to see you again. I'm not here very often anymore, but um, I'm here as often as I can. Um, tonight, um, I'd like to just give you a little update on our summer. This is we're all about summer reading at the library during this time of the year. Most of you already know that. We started on June um, 1st for adult uh, programs, um, June 10th for youth programs, and we'll be doing that till July 27th. So my pitch is please let any and everybody you know know about the summer reading program and encourage them to come and participate. I do have my usual display outside. Uh, it basically tells you what the theme is and gives you a little bit of an idea of when the programs are. There are flyers outside also. So that's that for that. Um, we also have a new collection at the library. I have a little show and tell, so bear with me. Um, a little while ago, the, the board um, agreed for the library to get an LSTA grant, that's Library Services and Technology Act grant, um, to introduce a new collection uh, at the library. It's called Makerspace. And I'll just let you know basically what that's about. Um, what it is is that we have uh, workshops in a kit in uh, boxes that we um, assemble and they are for children or adults, adults enjoy them also, to come into the library to experience um, learning by using their hands. And what I did was to bring you one unassembled one so that you can take a look at it. This is one kit of seven in the physics workshop and we chose I, I basically wanted to bring this one because of what our theme is for summer reading this year. Um, so we have seven of these bags in a box. We circulate them to all of our branch libraries. Um, one library may have up to seven workshops. And basically the kids and adults can come in, choose a theme. In this case, it will be physics. And they get the basic hands-on learning of what physics is all about. So we set them up at a table, a workshop, or in one of our conference rooms, and that's basically what this collection is. We accompany that. I'm tired. I've been running in Hamilton County all day, so please forgive me. Uh, we, have a, we have a physics uh, workshop notebook, and we encourage them. Don't be threatened by it. It's just full of pictures and a few directions, but it basically will walk them through how to assemble um, what they need to assemble for each, each um, workshop. So we're excited about it. Everybody seems to be pleased with it. The next step that we're trying to figure out is how to circulate it to the general population. So thought I would let you know about that. Um, I want to give um, a shout out to the Extension Office, Derby, Sale. He's been excellent in helping with the summer reading program this summer. I mean, I really can't um, 
sing his praises enough. He's very talented and very team-oriented, and he just fits right in. If I had a place for him over there, I'd probably steal him from you, Catherine. <laughs> but he's doing a great job. Um, you guys have questions for me? Any questions for Ms. Lawrence? Don't have any. I don't. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. All right, moving on to general business. Set date and time for workshop related to the purchase of the radio system used by fire rescue and <coughs> sheriff's office. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to speak to each of you, but um, could you check your calendars? Now, we need to talk to these radio people again, but I, I would like to be present in that meeting and um, we looked at the dates that had been proposed and I'm asking if August 13, which is a Tuesday, a Tuesday between your regular board meetings, it may be 11 o'clock. You said, and then we'd have to contact the company and see if they can be here as well. Tuesday, August 13. Bring that down an hour to 10. Pardon me? Can we make that at 10 o'clock instead? I got a feeling it's going to run a little bit long. Don't want to miss lunch. If we make it 1130, it'll be a 30 minute meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 10 o'clock. Does that work for Just you? Suggested. Yeah, the 13th is fine. If we, if we do it at, uh, at 11, and you know you want to go eat, and we, I think if we had, I think if we come together with one mind, we should be able to do it in an hour. Should be. I don't think the problem is going to be us coming together with one mind. It's them coming together and listen. Yeah. yeah. Well, my hope is that they show up prepared. They know that we're looking to cut some expense, but I, I don't know. They know, what they'll, they know what they can do or are willing to do when they get there. I think an hour would be long enough. Is this, is this going to be a um, workshop very specific to just our dealings with them and that, them, them alone, not our own internal um, consideration as far as what we want to see in a package? In other words, when we, when we sit down and talk with with uh, um, Sheriff and, and with uh, uh, Mr. Summers about how we can trim that part of it, our part of it, if, if we were to look at it that. Would this, is this just for the, the negotiation between them and our comp their company and us? Uh, well, what do y'all want it to be? Well, that's the reason why I think it would be a little bit longer than an hour. So. Uh, I'm, as long as it took last time. Yeah, but I don't know. <laughs> We still have to bring it back that workshop to a night that we're going to approve or make a purchase. I mean, we can Absolutely. we can talk with them there. Whatever you want to do then, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I'll just make a motion that Commissioner Richardson buy us all lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so That's not fair. That'd be a fair against second. one. <laughs> if I don't hear one, I'll pass the gal. <laughs> No, yeah, yeah, we can we can go as at much detail at that workshop as any of y'all want to go. I, if we do it at thirteenth, I'm gonna keep the whole day free. So, all right, I'll do whatever you want. If everybody gets hungry, we'll go break for lunch. Okay, that's fine. Eleven o'clock. I'm fine with it. eleven, ten, nine, whenever. Okay. Y'all make a motion, and we'll whatever we I'll get. Offer motion is do it eleven o'clock. On August thirteenth. August thirteenth, eleven o'clock. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Yeah, none. I got a quick discussion. Just <laughs> we're gonna have to confirm with the company they can be here, but I understand. My, my hope is that they can be here. If something if they are unable, we'll let you know and we won't schedule it. We'll if they want to sell them radios, they'll be here. Pardon me? If they want to sell those radios, they'll be here. <laughs> well, they've got a monopoly on the radio, so they're not <laughs> concerned about that probably. But having said that, um, I will say that we are moving ahead and budgeting appropriately for this. So you're not under pressure to make a quick decision with this company or, you know, numbers of units or anything else, because we're going to cover that in the worksheets for the budget going forward so that we're prepared for that regardless.
All right. Any other discussion? Hear none. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Yes, sir. Is that date? Have you already checked that date with the courts? Yes. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. We could hold it at a restaurant. That <laughs> sounded like well, my world would need to hold it at. Especially when you're paying for it, man. <laughs> if y'all hold it at the restaurant, all the public is you invited. Right there in the front. <laughs> and then Mr. Richardson said he was going to pay for it. <laughs> I didn't hear no vote. Minutes have been amended to reflect that. That'll be in the paper. Oh, Mr. Powell, I don't know how long you've been sitting there. I've been looking all the way. I guess I've been looking over you. No, I don't think of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll go back up to our time specific item at uh, 6 05 p.m. or soon thereafter. The matter can be heard. Presentation to audit for the end of the year, September 30th, 2018. Thank Mr. You. Richard Powell, CPA. <laughs> Thanks, sir. All right, it's a pleasure delivering the annual audit of Swanee County. Uh, just a quick overview, an audit of a county is a separate audit of each constitutional officer in the board, and then a, a compilation of all of the all of the separate audits into this one document and the first tab is the combined audit of the county as a whole. Uh, as always in appreciating my early uh, time slot I will uh, re review what I consider the highlights of the audit and then be pleased to answer any questions address any concerns of the board. On page 8, 9, and 10 is the audit opinion it states that it's a complete audit of the county conducted in accordance with applicable auditing standards, which include the financial auditing standards, the government auditing standards, the federal single audit standards, and the state single audit standards due to your uh, grant activity. So, there, so uh, you had four levels of required audit procedures. In an audit, what you seek is a clean, unmodified opinion that states that the financial statements are an accurate reflection of how the county stood at the end of the year, what transpired financially during the year. You have that highest level of assurance, which is a good reflection of the quality of the financial records and practices of the county, the board, and each constitutional officer. Uh, the next section beginning on page 11, management's discussion and analysis, is some required overview financial information on the county, but due to the fact that it is derived from the financial statements, I will ask that you uh, review that on your own, and I'll go directly to the pertinent financial statements, the first one being on page 23. Uh, the county being... A a government operates under the governmental fund accounting principles, has two types of funds, governmental funds, which are by far the majority of the funds of the county, and uh, enterprise funds, of which the county has three. So this is the balance sheet of the governmental funds. Uh, uh, and it shows the major funds of the county, and then the last column is a combination of all the non-major funds. The detail is further into the audit. Balance sheet, snapshot, financial view of these funds at the end of the fiscal year. First uh, the column is the general fund, the major fund of the county. Uh, your major funds are general, road and bridge, fine and forfeiture, library, fire protection, clerk circuit court, sheriff operating, reserve capital infrastructure and road and bridge construction. So your total assets of all of these funds 
were 39,838,878. Total liabilities, 3,639,029. Fund balances are cash reserves, so the total fund balances were 36,299,848. If you look at the, uh, all the way over now to the general fund, the uh, three numbers up, unassigned, uh, fund balance, the general fund, 9537989 That's the unrestricted uh, fund, the cash reserve in the general fund that under control of the Board of County Commissioners but can be used for any legal expenditure. Uh, I always look at um, uh, how much of general fund expenditures and transfers out would that pay for in this year. It's right between five and six months. So uh, I can remember when that was m much lower, but now that's up to a very acceptable level and very commendable. Uh, moving on, the road and bridge fund, fund balance is five months, fine and forfeiture four months, and <laughs> the library seven months. So uh, overall, you have adequate, you had adequate reserves in these funds at the end of the fiscal year. Now the next statement on page 24 is the uh, revenues and expenditure statement of these funds. And again, the total revenues were 54472668 Total expenditures, 55159828 You had some transfers in and out. So the uh, bottom line for all of these funds, you were positive 2470000 Nine six thirty seven about two and a half million, and if you go over and look at general funds, you were positive one million one eighty three one sixty eight. So you uh, have uh, you continued to increase your reserves in this year overall by two and a half million general fund by one million one fifty three. So for all of these funds, you were stronger at the end of the year than at the beginning of the year. The other type funds that you have are your enterprise funds, and they are shown on page 26. Okay, you have three enterprise funds. You have the solid waste collection, solid waste disposal, and a small new fund, the water plant. Enterprise funds, the intent of an enterprise fund is, is to operate uh, strictly off user charges so you don't have to, uh, to subsidize these operations with your general revenues. So, uh, so they use business accounting principles. So uh, some information, the total assets of these funds were 5709331 the uh, total liabilities were 2,232,897 and long-term liabilities 2,179 and landfill closure post closure and then about 850,000 in employee related liabilities so so overall i would say that overall you were stronger at the end of the year than at the beginning of the year. You had adequate reserves in all areas, and that if there's any area you should uh, <laughs> you should monitor, especially through the next budget cycle, would be the the solid waste funds. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, our audit was uh, conducted under various auditing standards. Uh, on page 9697 is our report regarding procedures required by government auditing standards. These standards go beyond just numbers and require uh, audit, auditing procedures regarding internal control over financial reporting, compliance with various laws, regulations. We had no findings or question costs in those areas. Page 98-99 is our report regarding the federal single audit uh, required procedures. Uh, these procedures extend beyond the others and require additional compliance procedures on, on your major federal programs. We had no findings, question costs. 
page 100, 101 is the equivalent report regarding your state single audit. Again, additional procedures regarding the major grant program, state programs. We had no findings, question costs. On page uh, 102, 103, and 104, you have a lot of grant activity. It's a, it's a schedule of your grant activity, and it shows that for this year, the federal grants were 1,550,000. The state grants were 9129932 So in this year, you had $10.7 million in grants. And here again, your staff had to uh, administer these. The finance office had to keep separate records on them. And uh, it was commendable that there were no findings. In, and we had to audit them. No findings or question costs. On on page 108, 109 is the combined management letter for the county. In here, uh, we would include findings, recommendations that were not uh, includable in the other reports, but areas with which we wish to make you aware. Uh, we also would look at the status of any prior year findings and any new findings uh, without repeating each one, both for the board and for each of the constitutional officers. There were no reportable findings in the prior year, no reportable findings in the current year, which is excellent. And I'm not sure if, if that's ever happened here. It hadn't happened many times. Uh, we determined that the county did not meet any of the conditions uh, that might uh, place it in a statutory financial emergency. We did financial condition assessment procedures. I've given you the highlights of those. We noted no deteriorating financial conditions within the county. We've reviewed all of this information with the appropriate staff. On page 111, additionally, we're required to perform audit procedures regarding uh, some issue, some items in the clerk's audit, and then as to the board regarding investment of funds and uh, administration of E911. We did all of that and had no findings. And so, uh, as always, we appreciate working with the county and each officer, and I'd be pleased to answer any questions of the board. All right, well, thank you, sir. Any questions from the board? Mr. Powell? I'll just simply say, Mr. Chairman, I appreciate all the hard work that you do. It just gives me a headache going over this book, looking at it. But. Uh, I like it. Uh, I like the conclusions when you come up and you say there's no reportable findings. That's, that's always a good. Thing. Good deal. Yep, I appreciate it, sir. Y yes, sir, and thank you. Thank you. You got something you want to add, Mr. Becker? Slightly delayed time slot. Nope. It's all right. I'd like to thank. Uh, I'd like to thank our staff out at finance, Keith, and and, and all the ladies out there who did a great job. I'd also like to thank the way that, that all your departments have worked alongside of our department in order to get it I guess the, uh, it's a year in report so I appreciate yeah, it. It, it, it everybody did a great job because it is a coordinated effort between departments and between finance mm -hmm. to go one year with no findings but two years with no findings so uh, appreciate everybody's hard work thank y'all all right oh yeah Item 14. Mm -hmm. All right. Discuss any possible board action, uh, any issues associated with the wastewater or the water plant, I-75 and 136. Was there anything new, Mr. Harris? No, sir. Do we have any additional agenda items? No, sir. All right. At this time, we'll call for public comments and concerns. Anyone wishing to speak, make their way to the podium. Oh, Hancock 6135 Wiggins Road, Swanee County. Um, there was some mention at the last meeting um, by Mr. Harris regarding the Catalyst site and their employers and their fulfilling their requirements, uh, the grant requirements re regarding employees. What's the county's liability? If they fail to produce, what's the county's liability? 
And does the insurance that we carry cover that? I'm going to give you the non-lawyer response to that question. <laughs> I saw Mr. Shorter Pratt, Mr. Pravat leaning forward, so let me answer that for you. We have an agreement uh, that was executed with uh, Klausner, Klausner and Matco both before we began spending money from the CDBG grant. Essentially, um, with CDBG, that is a, an economic development grant uh, predicated on job creation. If the jobs are not created, then the county has to, if we have actually been reimbursed using those funds, we have to pay that money back. Uh, Mr. Bravat and I had a conversation in the chairman uh, uh, about this before we began construction out there. So we have an agreement with those two entities that essentially says that if we have to pay any funds back to the grant entities that uh, the companies that do not fulfill their obligation to create the jobs have to reimburse the county. That's the short story. Okay. How many dollars are we talking about? Right now, uh, about 677000 Insurance that, that we carry done does not cover that. I don't, I'm not aware of any insurance that we could get that would cover that. Because I, it, it isn't no. a failure on our part. We've actually performed. Do we have any legal agreement. recourse? We do, and it's actually, like I said, it's in an executed agreement. The contract. So when will all this come to a head, time-wise? Well, we are working. Uh, I'm just going to tell you I'm ever the optimist. Um, my hope is that they actually perform and do what they need to do. Mr. Pravat and I are working on some communications that will go to them very soon. We've been communicating with them. Um, for quite some time, but we're going to send a communication out very soon that uh, I'm hopeful will result in a response that speaks to the issue of the job creation and the obligations of the grant. Mr. Beck, do you have anything to add? Not unless I'm directed. <laughs> <laughs> Now, Mr. Harris has covered it. I mean, we're you know we're at that stage. You know, we're discussing it with them. They're not in default, you know, yet. Yeah, well, I mean, the timeline hadn't run out yet. Yeah, the, they're not in default yet, but we're just seeking assurances that they're moving forward, and we want to. I mean, and under our agreement, we can seek those assurances. So that's what we're doing. Yeah, that, all we've been doing is reaching out for timelines and uh, asking them to verify where they're at and when they think they'll finish up. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. about that, isn't, uh, I remember from Dr. Jackson, wasn't this a, um, uh, it's a performance-based uh, incentive program that was paid out on a yearly basis, so don't they have a year by, we have a year by year. Um, that's a separate, that's something yeah. entirely different. That's the, uh, that's, that's the local about. tax rebate program. What we're talking about is the grant program where we apply oh, for okay, state and federal right. grants to right. build the rail spur. Apologize, I thought. I appreciate you correcting that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyone else with any comments, questions, or concerns? Oh, seeing none, we'll move on. Mr. Harris, do you have anything for us? <clears throat> Just one thing. Um, I wasn't able to make the event over at the Douglas uh, Center the other day. But I wanted to point out that the uh, gable ends of the gymnasium look really nasty. We are working on getting some numbers together on replacing that material and just have not gotten those back yet. So when we do, I'll bring that back to the board because the rest of the building looks great. The painting is completed. Um, and I've talked to Mr. Scott about other things that we're planning to do out there on the property. But I want to let you know that um, we know that something additional needs to be done on that gymnasium. We just don't have the information back yet. I tell you, I was there, and Mr. Fleming was there, and the air conditioner was broke. <laughs> it was wide open. I couldn't tell. Yeah. It was hot. Well, I, I want to mention we're, that. We're, we're going to try to put, uh, I'm, I'm going to work on that in the next year, uh, trying to get uh, 
some estimates on what it might cost to put air conditioning in that building. Yeah, it would gonna, require insulation and everything else. It'd be a massive undertaking. But well, when they I had time, when when they redid the roof, did they insulate under the new roof? I don't have any reason to believe that they did. The uh, the material that's up above the trusses now is that a uh, just a, a sound barrier? That I don't know. I, I was looking. What at I do know is it needs to be insulated in order to put air conditioning in. Yeah, there. yeah. The ends the ends wouldn't hold it. Where they uh, yeah. That you're talking about getting a price on replacing. I was just looking at the roof. Um, it looks like it's got that that I can't think of what to call it, like a like a fiberglass board. It's usually about two inches thick, but I don't think it's insulation. I think it was uh, to control the noise. Yeah, probably is. All right. Anything else? No, sir. All right, moving on to the board member's request comments. Mr. Richardson, you have anything for us? Uh, just clarification this weekend, or this this week, uh, at 12 o'clock noon on Thursday, Brantford will have its annual uh, Brantford River Reunion. Uh, festival. It'll be held at the Greenway Park. Or Green, I'm sorry, Mr. Scott. I apologize. I added it without even thinking. The Greenway uh, in Branford. Um, it is a park. The whole thing's a park. Uh, and it'll be held at, uh, at noon so that you can attend both Live Oaks and, um, uh, and Branford. Branford's on that same day, I think, right? This is the Live Oak events in the evening, correct? See, so come join us out on the south end. We'd love to have you. Now, there's a 5K that morning. Are you running in that? No, I'm said 12 o'clock. No, I believe it starts earlier. Ooh. I may drive behind them. <laughs> Mr. Fleming, you have anything for us? Uh, I don't have anything much. I just want to uh, echo what has already been said concerning the uh, Douglas Center, the open house. It was a very nice program. It was very well rehearsed. Just one thing, the air conditioning was broke and uh, got a little hot. I, I, I pat the chairman on his back and, and I slapped water out of his back of his back. <laughs> and, uh, but, I, you know, I know it's, a, it's an ongoing project and um, as you echoed that we, we got to have some installation in there and be looking at doing some things out there, some, some positive things. And I just want to let the community know that it is not an overlook. Yet. We're working toward trying to get some things so that we can all be profitable. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Mr. Hill, do you have anything for us? Uh, no, not really. Just uh, hope everybody has a safe fourth and uh, remember what we're uh, celebrating, guys. That's what's important. Everyone be safe. Mr. Stapleton. About the same, just uh, be safe. Thank you to our first responders. Y'all be safe. Always some calls that happens during this time. Uh, look out for these children. That's the biggest thing. That's all I got. Um, I was going to mention the same thing everybody else did, 4th of July at Brantford and the 4th of July festivals here in Live Oak. Um, also, just want to remind those and just ask everyone the um uh, mr mr jordan thank Andy you. jordan that thank you uh, he comes to our meeting every now and then yep. with some of the mission work just to keep his family him and your in your prayers uh, they had a tragedy this past week and just say a prayer for him keep them any thoughts other than that i don't have anything just need a motion to adjourn move to adjourn a second thank you all in favor say aye, aye. Yep. Set up.